It is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you our new video conference series entitled Telecommunications for Education and Professional Development. The material has been designed very carefully for professionals interested in the potential application of this technology to their organizations. I welcome you all. This exciting new series will consist of four video conferences to be delivered every year under the traditional format of our International Training Center seminars. The main themes to be addressed by the expert speakers will be modern instructional technology, which is a topic for today, video conferencing, distance education, and multimedia. I am certain this new certificate program will provide you with a broad perspective towards one of today's most exciting technologies yet to be used appropriately, I believe, for education and training. What can be done in this regard? Well, I believe that the first step in getting your organization involved is to take the simple capability you currently have to transfer or receive information via an old telephone line or a computer hookup, resources which up to now have certainly supported successfully most commercial applications of the telecommunications industry, and to convert this capability into a true instructor-learner interactive system, however simple it might be, where managers and employees located at their work site or at their homes are now able to see and hear each other under a pre-designed format. With many new technical options available today to improve the cost effectiveness of satellites, microwave systems, and television broadcasting and cable networks, plus a more user-friendly electronic communication hardware and software, Decision makers today can certainly introduce much more easily this new instructor learner format to our educational institutions and to the workplace. With the traditional print media, a one way non interactive communication concept, losing gradually its deep rooted historic preference. It is estimated, in fact, that around 60 million people or one-fourth of the total population in the United States now get their news through television. Can you all imagine introducing some interaction capability here? But however, uh, what ultimately will make modern instructional technology of deep consequence to our global society is not only the impact of this revolutionary interactive format which will now influence how the message is delivered, but also the realization that the transfer of knowledge or intelligent messages communicated through this technology will necessarily become more the norm than the exception, since we will always have a learner now at the, end, at the other end to demand content. Organizing and managing appropriately the state of the art should be therefore the very first step towards making sure that our society does not fall trap to the compelling dangers of an easily obtainable technology which seems to invite us ever more to communicate more and more but without really saying anything to each other. The crucial and important symbiosis of trans trainers, educators, with modern instructional technology experts can only be done with the support and understanding of government officials, business executives, and decision makers involved in general with human resource development and resource allocation within our organizations. Most professionals today would certainly agree that we are truly entering a global era where technology is gradually but surely overcoming the barriers of time and distance that have organized work through the centuries. But technological change in our communities, even in the most disadvantaged economically, is so rapid 
that it is beyond the capacity of any single business or nation to manage it. International cooperation is a must. Our program is a modest but important first step. It is the result of many years of practical demonstrations and involvement with educational and business organizations in selected regions of the world. In this video conference today, Telecom de Mexico is providing the satellite linkage support for Mexico and Central America, and I would like to acknowledge them. Effective coordination with our production and uplink provider, KPBS, as well as with PanamSat, applying a team approach will allow us to deliver more quality programs in the future. We must expand these cooperative experiences to similar telecommunications organizations serving other continents to continue in this manner our crusade of producing global competitiveness for the benefit of all. Thank you very much. Welcome from the International Training Center at San Diego State University and the studios of KPBS-TV. I'm Dr. Michael Reel, the moderator for this teleconference. We are broadcasting live via satellite in the first of four sessions on the topic of telecommunications for education and professional development. It is my pleasure to welcome our experts and all our participants today from Latin America, as well as our friends from the Organization of American States in Washington, D.C. This series of teleconferences is designed for the non-specialist interested in the potential application of learning technologies in organizations seeking to be successful globally and locally. Our certificate program gives you a new understanding of the potential of today's most exciting and useful technologies. We'd like to remind the coordinator in each receiver site to collect the attendance sheets and mail them back to us as soon as possible include the evaluation forms filled out by those interested in receiving the certificate of participation. This teleconference is itself an example of our topic today, innovative technology applied for training and education. Telecommunications is people communicating with and through technology over distance in real time. Telecommunication is the basic electronic technological connection made between a sender at one site and a receiver at another site. What occurs is that the words and images from the sender are encoded into electrical impulses. These impulses or signals are transmitted over wires or through the air and then are decoded at the receiver site so that the electrical impulses are changed back into the original words and images. The receiver is able to see and hear the same thing that originates at the sender site even though the messages have been transmitted in a different form through many relay devices. This relay transmission normally involves several stages including a wire or cable and a satellite or microwave connection. Many amplifiers or other signal mo modifications may occur along the route. The genius of a good telecommunication system is that for the user it is transparent. That is, the user doesn't have to think about all the encoding and decoding and signal modifications and transmissions along the way. The user talks with the receiver and the receiver talks back. Telecommunications facilitate human and machine interaction. Our satellite connection today provides one-way video. You can see our guest experts here. And two-way audio. We can talk with you and you can talk back to us. Satellite, microwave, and wire transmissions link the International Training Center and all of you at our downlink sites. Are you looking forward, like I am, to the World Cup 94? All over the world, cup fever is building now. 
the very same technologies that will make it possible for more than one billion people to watch the World Cup live in the next month can also be used effectively for training and education. Let us share with you some ways to do this. Telecommunication technologies link us together, whether they are traditional telephone or the futuristic information superhighway, whether they are a user-friendly computer program or a fancy fiber optic network linking training sites. Telephone, television, computers, satellites, cable, imaging systems, virtual reality, you name the technology and you can bet there are excellent applications of it for training and education. In fact, there often seems to be too much technology, too much to understand, too much to keep up with. Am I right? But the positive side of this abundance is that we no longer have to start with the telecommunication technology and ask what it can do. Instead, we now start with the question, what do our employees, our students, our colleagues need to learn? Then we find the appropriate technology to do that. Appropriate technology, like sustainable development, means that we consider the benefits and the costs and find the best fit for our very specific, very particular situation and needs. That is what telecommunications now can do. Technology also allows us to ask, how do our employees and students best learn? The print media of books, newspapers, letters, and memos are still with us. But electronic media have opened up great new possibilities. Technology can bypass illiteracy, making education and training work for those who are not eager readers. Technology can facilitate individual learning at a computer or group learning through video. Better than older print media, telecommunication is interactive. The ability of the employee, the learner, to interact with the source of instruction is essential for real learning. New technologies make this enhanced teacher-learner interaction a practical reality in the workplace and in our educational institutions. In the all-too-near future, tools for the interactive transfer of knowledge and intellect, intellect, intelligent messages will become the norm rather than the exception. Knowing how to organize and manage the state of the art is the first step toward making the dream of dynamic learning available to our companies, our schools, and our communities. Telecommunication is a set of tools waiting for us to implement them for innovative, dynamic, effective education and training. The famous newsman Edward R. Murrow once said of television, this instrument can teach, it can illuminate, yes, and it can even inspire. But it can do so only to the extent that humans are determined to use it to those ends. Otherwise, it is merely lights and wires in a box. Let us hope that our live teleconference today will better enable each of us to use telecommunication technologies to teach, to illuminate, even to inspire. Many applications of telecommunication technology can be extremely effective for professional development and learning. We have three experts on this subject with us today. Dr. William Broderick has been Director of Media Technology Services at San Diego State University since 1977. He has authored many articles and papers on the planning and management of instructional technologies, on copyright issues, and on evaluating training models. He currently manages a large set of telecommunication facilities and a large professional staff. Welcome, Dr. Broderick. Dr. Bernard Dodge is a leader in new technology models and training tools. As professor of educational technology at San Diego State, he has created software designs, teacher training, and interactive instruction models for the workplace. He holds a BA in electrical engineering and an MA and PhD in instructional design. He is a consultant to SENAC in Brazil, the Academy for Pedagogical Sciences in Russia, and many multinational corporations. Welcome, Dr. Dodge. 
Mr. Richard Strobridge is president of Teleimages Incorporated, a recognized video systems consulting, integration, and products company based in San Diego. He has been providing telecommunication solutions for industry since 1981 and has created a number of video configurations to solve unique problems. Mr. Strobridge has ample consulting experience in the development and engineering of innovative electronic imaging systems. Welcome, Mr. Strobridge. Thank you. Our experts are here today to address questions of applying telecommunication for education and training. How do we organize people to effectively provide and use telecommunication services? How do we solve the challenges of configuring technology to meet our needs? Which technologies have been most effective and which promise the most for the future? I have a preliminary question for our speakers. In general, is it really worth it to invest time and money in instructional technology for education and training purposes? Or is it enough to go with older, cheaper ways and still get by? Bill? Well, I think those of us who are here today believe that the investment is, is well worth it or we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have this investment in this particular enterprise and be communicating these particular messages if we weren't believers. I think one has to proceed with caution, not let the technology drive the enterprise, but as you mentioned earlier, the real, the real key is the focus on teaching and learning. What, what are the outcomes, what are the goals that one wants and the technology is really only a means of accomplishing those ends. Bertie? I believe that it's uh, time and uh, very, very true that we can use technology to solve a variety of problems. If you look at uh, the early days of our field, we had a few technologies and a few formats for using them, and we overpromised and underdelivered. Now we have such a variety of tools to play with that we can turn our focus back to the act of teaching. And if we focus on good teaching, we have enough ways to make it happen that I'm confident that it is worth the investment. Rick. Well, Michael, I can only go by what my uh, customers are telling me and uh, by both their, their actions and, uh, and their words. And every year they're coming back and adding more and more systems to, uh, to their networks and uh, they are really uh, enthused with the technology but again keep the instructional goals in mind good now we will listen to uh, dr broderick's presentation on planning and managing an instructional technology support group In our presentation today, we will look at planning and organizing an instructional technology support group. Such a support group can be as important to the training activities of a business or industry as it is to the instructional program of a school or university. Organizing an instructional technology support group is one response to the need for technological expertise. Another way of responding to such needs is by contracting with an outside vendor. Of course, it may be desirable to use a combination of these two approaches, establishing an internal group for dealing with day-to-day -day services and employing external services for assistance with new projects or for solving specific problems. What is instructional technology? It is more than just audiovisual equipment, videotapes, and computers. Instructional technology is defined as the application of our scientific knowledge about human learning to the practical tasks of teaching and learning. By this definition, we are including not only equipment and materials, but the process by which the teaching or training is actually conducted. From this definition, we move to a specific technology of instruction, that is, the systematic arrangement of teaching learning events designed to attain predictable learning outcomes. An example of a technology of instruction is a computer-based simulation. Planning the support group 
begins with a vision, such as the vision of an instructional setting in which all instructors are aware of and comfortable with using all appropriate technologies, and where these technologies are supported by a knowledgeable and responsive staff. The support group is the knowledgeable and responsive staff. A vision, then, is a concept of a desired state of affairs. In the division statement, a key phrase is appropriate technologies. What are appropriate technologies? And how do we create appropriate technology systems? Appropriate technologies are determined by their effectiveness in the teaching learning process and by the cost of that effectiveness in terms of time and money. We create them by basing our decisions on principles of teaching learning and on principles of sound resource management. We then implement these decisions through the activities and programs of an instructional technology group. Technology systems include people, equipment, materials, facilities, and processes. We will be looking in detail at each of these features as we examine a number of technology systems. Each technology system is developed in response to a particular objective or set of related objectives. A few moments ago, I talked about the vision which could lead to the formation of an instructional technology support group. On the basis of the, vi of the vision, a set of goals is developed. Some likely goals of the group might be to provide a facility where instructors can design and produce their own computer-based instructional materials. To equip all instructional locations with such basic technology as projection screen, overhead projector, television set, and a video cassette recorder. To develop a facility for the organization and reception of instruction by distance learning technology and to provide instructors with an understanding of how te instructional technology should be designed, consistent with principles of teaching and learning. Out of the goals, functions develop as plans are formulated to reach the goals. The functions of the instructional technology support group will most likely be of four generic types, creative, the design and production of media, technical, the design and installation of facilities and equipment systems, the operation of technical systems, the maintenance and repair of facilities and systems, managing, acquiring and circulating equipment and media, data collecting and reporting, consulting, working with instructional staff to improve their teaching and testing procedures, providing leadership to development of new courses, working with instructors in the design of instruction. For these functions to be carried out, programs and activities will have to be developed. Let's look at some examples of programs and activities related to each of the functions. In the production of media, the trend is clearly toward digital multimedia. Multimedia production requires the integration of such skills and abilities as videography, video editing, computer graphics, instructional design, and either computer programming skills or the ability to use computer authoring software such as a director or a toolbook. These authoring programs provide the user with the capability to integrate text and audiovisual materials into a cohesive presentation. Television or video continues as an extremely valuable medium for instruction. Video discs particularly offer a great deal of instructor control to the sequence of a presentation. 
it is not that difficult or expensive to have a videotape converted to video disc. Graphics design and production and photography are still components of most media production units. There will always be a need for creative people, but they may have to modify their skills somewhat. Electronic imaging is revolutionizing both of these areas as the technologies are converging to digital. The distinction between photographer and graphic artist begins to blur as the graphic artist scans a still photograph into a computer or grabs a frame from a videotape and then changes it pixel by pixel into an image essential to the message being designed. To create the desired effects, both photographer and graphic artist will have to become familiar with such computer software as Photoshop, Freehand, and PowerPoint. The distribution of media is becoming more and more electronic based. Some organizations have a closed circuit television system connected to instructional locations, including lecture halls, classrooms, and laboratories. Teaching stations are sometimes equipped with a touchtone telephone, which can be used to call a videotape player in the television master control. Once connected, the telephone becomes a remote control by which the instructor can control the video cassette recorder or video disc player. Some institutions are now experimenting with using computer networks to provide instructors with access to a wide array of media, including video, audio, graphics, still pictures, animation, and text on demand in their classrooms. One way to do this is to use a mainframe computer as a giant hard drive or mega server which could store all desired media. These media can then be accessed from the classroom by computer terminal and presented in any order the professor chooses. There are several engineering and technical functions including the design and assembly of systems and the maintenance and repair of equipment and systems. The technical staff may become immersed in the design of two-way interactive distance learning facilities. They will look at video cameras, monitors, audio systems and controls, and weigh the pros and cons of voice-activated microphones versus push-to-talk microphones. They might design a control room, which would control two different facilities, one primarily a classroom and the other primarily a conference room, which might also be used for small classes. The design of these technical components is done in consultation with the teaching learning professional, who makes sure that the technology is appropriate to facilitate learning. Technological expertise also contributes to facilities design. Facilities for instructional technology must be designed for adapting to change. Three major considerations in being able to adapt facilities to new use are providing adequate heat, ventilation, and air conditioning, adequate electrical power, and sufficient conduits for all possible communication channels. Most electronic components give off heat and when a large number of them are clustered together, such as in a control room, ventilation and cooling must be provided. In designing, sufficient electrical power must be provided to the building and at least one electrical outlet for every wall and more for special purpose rooms. You can never have